These are known as narrow gauge railways. Many were built for use in the mining areas and quarries to transport minerals such as lead ore and slate. Some were open to serve agricultural and farming transport needs. In the many slate quarries of Wales, small steam locomotives like this were used to move wagons of slate to the workshops for processing, and then reloaded onto wagons of the four-foot gauge Padan Railway for transport to Port de Norwich on the Menai Straits. From the 1940s to the early 1960s, many of these railways were closed owing to the decline in the state industry and to improvements in road transport. Fortunately, however, through various dedicated preservation schemes and inspired governmental departments, many original narrow-gauge lines survive today as passenger-carrying railways, serving the local community and leisure traveller alike. In other areas, narrow-gauge tracks have been laid on long-closed, original standard-gauge lines to open up scenic routes once again for the train traveller. The journey around the country will reveal many of these railways which are open today, managed by a small permanent staff and operated mainly by volunteers from all walks of life who give up much of their spare time on holidays just for their love of steam trains. Beautifully restored and maintained steam locomotives and rolling stock traverse some of the most scenic areas of Britain. Below the Lake District's highest mountain, at Dale Garth, a train of the 15-inch gauge Ravenglass and Axdale Railway arrives at the end of its seven-mile journey from the coast. All hands assist in preparation for its return trip. The locomotive can only be driven chimney first with its coaches, owing to its limited cab dimensions. The driver has the best view as we journey back to its home station on the Cumbrian coast, with its workshops, hub and museum. Built in 1976 at the railway's own workshops, assisted by the Northern Rock Building Society, this is one of the most powerful 15-inch gauge steam locomotives in the world, departing on another journey through wooded valleys and by rugged hillsides. Opened in 1875, the Ratty, as it's known locally, used three-foot gauge tracks to transport iron ore from mines at Eskdale down to the main line of the Furness Railway. After financial difficulties in the early 1900s, many changes were made, and a new company taking over reduced the line to a 15-inch gauge using robust miniature steam locomotives and carriages. The line was saved an uncertain future by the Preservation Society, aided by local businessmen. Today, it enjoys a new lease of life as a tourist line operated by a private company with enthusiastic support by society members. Most of the trains on this scenic line are hauled by third-scale steam locomotives with diesel power on some services. In another part of Cumbria, in the North Pennine area of outstanding natural beauty, will be found a narrow gauge line whose trains, in their bright livery, contrast perfectly with the natural countryside. This is the two-foot gauge South Tyndale Railway, which was built on the trackbed of a former LNAR branch line between Holtwistle and Alston, which closed in 1976.
It is operated by the South Tynedale Railway Society, whose headquarters are in the restored original station at Alston, whose history has been linked to lead mining since Roman times. Passenger services operate generally from spring to autumn each year, with seasonal special services in the winter months. A connection of steam and diesel locomotives from both Britain and abroad operate the train services, and the purpose-built coaches offer a comfortable ride in all weathers. The present far end station on the line is two and a half miles from Alston. This temporary terminus was opened in the early summer of 2000, but progress has been made to open a further two and a quarter miles of the line to Slaggyford. Also, if plans go well, Narragate's trains may once again cross this beautifully preserved viaduct towards Holtwistle, giving fine views of the North Country scenery. From the hills of Cumbria to the sand hills of Bedfordshire, a double-headed special train sets off from Pages Park Station on the Leighton Buzzard Narrow Gauge Railway on its two and three quarter mile journey to Stonehenge Works. Another train is hauled by Elf, a unique 060 well tanked wood burning locomotive built in 1936. On one of the many special events days, a lineup of some of the largest collection of narrow gauge locomotives in Britain prepare for a busy day ahead. Acquired from many sources, including India, West Africa and Germany, as well as those built in the British Isles, steam and diesel locomotives operate passenger trains on completely rebuilt track, crossing major and minor roads en route. Sharp curves and steep gradients make the locomotives work really hard, and its roadside running can cause much interest to casual visitors. The line originally opened in 1919 to transport sand from the quarries north of Leighton Buzzard to the former London and Northwestern Railway connection at Grovebury. When sand trains had finally ceased running in 1977, the Preservation Society, which had been using the tracks at weekends, took over running rights for the whole line. Over the ensuing years, enormous progress has been made to make it today one of England's finest narrow gauge preservation sites. This two foot gauge line has been built on part of the track bed of the former Great Western Raban to Barmouth standard gauge line. It is known as the Barla Lake Railway. As well as steam locomotives, formerly used in the slate quarries of North Wales, powerful miniature diesel locomotives and new carriages have been built for use on the line to force passengers an unrivaled view of Bala Lake, the largest natural lake in Wales. The railway's terminus and headquarters are in this fine original station building which offers every facility for the visitor. Three miles to the north of Merthyr Tydfil in South Wales is Pant Station, the starting point for a journey on the Brecon Mountain Railway. Steam locomotives imported from East and West Germany and South Africa haul purpose-built passenger coaches on the two-foot gauge line which has been constructed on part of the former Brecon and Merthyr Railway, late Great Western Railway, and then British Rail, which closed in 1963. Routed through part of the Brecon Beacons National Park, this three and a half mile line has gradually been extended northward towards Brecon. The first main stopping point on the journey is a popular location for a picnic, especially on a sunny day. 
Situated in the rolling hills of the Powys countryside, the eight-mile-long Welshpool and Panther Light Railway is the nearest narrow-gauge line to the English border. Here, one of the two original Bear Peacock locomotives, built for the opening of the line in 1903, heads its train round the curves in the wooded section before heading out across the fields on its way to Banfair Carinian, the headquarters of the line, with its workshops and its Wardian style refreshment room. The other main station is Raven Square, on the outskirts of Wellsford. Here, a Hunsley-built locomotive of 1954 has worked for many years in Sierra Leone and was purchased for use on this railway, along with a set of coaches from the same country. locomotive collection embraces examples from three continents. Other coaches in use are turn-of-the-century balcony saloons from Austria. There's also a small number of original W&L wagons and vans, all now beautifully restored. At Silpen, an intermediate passing place on this two-foot six-gauge line, a Belgian-built 080 tech locomotive of 1944 vintage heads another train from Welshpool on this delightful line with its decidedly foreign atmosphere. One of these special gala weekends, locomotive number one passes Castle Station with a special mixed train, giving variety to the scene. Loco number 15, Orion, a powerful 262 tank from Finland, built in 1948, is a recent addition to the fleet and can haul the heaviest of trains. Operated mainly by enthusiastic volunteers and a small permanent staff, this railway has gained a deserved reputation as one of the most progressive of its type. Crossing the mile-long cob, a Festiniog railway train sets out on its 13 and a half mile journey to Blinau Festiniog, once a thriving slate quarrying centre. This, the world's oldest independent railway, was opened in 1836 to a gauge of two feet to transfer slate from the quarries of Blinau Festiniog down to the harbour at Port Meadow. In the early days, fully laden slate wagons ran down by gravity on the line engineered with a continuous gradient from the mountains to the sea. 1863 saw the first steam locomotive, Prince, which is still in service today, along with examples of the unique double-ended articulated locomotive designed by Robert Fairley, first introduced in 1879 to cope with the increased traffic. As our loco takes refreshment, a special party joins the train for the return journey. Its route traverses some of North Wales' finest scenery as it climbs and winds its way up the side of a valley to a summit 700 feet above sea level. Intermediate stations give access to many scenic locations en route, most of them in the heart of the Snowdonia National Park. The veteran locomotive Prince of 1863 
proudly stands alongside a more recent addition to the fleet, built in the railway's own workshops in 1992. On special events, other vintage steam locomotives come out to show their paces, hauling trains of slate wagons or with other restored freight vehicles. On some occasions, there's even a demonstration gravity train run past, the true Slate Express. An evening train crosses the Cobb back to the railway's main headquarters, Harbour Station, Fourth Maddock, once a thriving scene of slate wharves and sailing ships. Built by Edward I, the famous castle overlooks the harbour of Gwynedd County Town, Carnarvon. From its new northern terminus, trains set out for the reopened section of the two-foot gauge Welsh Highland Railway. This railway, which is North Wales' biggest millennium project, is planned eventually to be reopened in stages through to Porth Maddock a distance of some 23 miles, a task which is well underway today. Powerful Bear Peacock locomotives, which worked in South Africa for many years, have been acquired for present and future services with sets of newly built coaches. This line will open up magnificent views of the mountains and return steam trains again to the tunnels of the Abbot Laslin Pass. On the outskirts of Port Maddock, another short section of narrow gauge line runs alongside the track bed of the southwestern end of the original Welsh Highland Railway. Steam services which operate today include the 262 tank locomotive Russell of 1906, an original Welsh Highland locomotive it's been beautifully restored. Together with new purpose-built coaches, passengers can take a three-quarter mile ride along to a temporary halt at Penny Mount. The trip includes a short visit to the headquarters and workshops at Gellert's Farm, where restoration work is in progress and where extension plans towards the mountains are on display. Cowan on the Cambrian coast is the home of the Talis Lynn Railway, the first of the narrow gauge lines to be preserved in the early 1950s. From War Station, Loco number 6, Douglas, sets off on its seven and a half mile journey along the steadily rising gradient of the Fatshu Valley to its terminus in the hills. All trains stop at Dolgoff Falls, a popular place to stay a while to visit the waterfalls in a wooded ravine. This two foot three inch gauge line was opened in 1866 to transport slate from Wynyard Lewis quarries at Aberganowen down to the Cambrian main line at Tawin. This terminal station, set in a natural ravine, can be the starting point for woodland walks and to view the remains of Brynard Lewis quarries above the incline. Both of the two original locomotives are in regular use today. Built in 1865 and 1866 respectively, beautifully preserved and maintained. Other locomotives in use are two from the former Chorus Railway, now numbered three and four. A more recent addition is Loco Number no. 7, Tom Rott, named after the founder member of the Tarrislin Railway Preservation Society. This is virtually a new locomotive, rebuilt from the original, 
at the railway's own workshops. There is also a set of original passenger coaches, chopper passengers of real journey back in time. All trains on the return journey stop a while at Abergan Owen with its refreshment facilities. A mile down the road is Abergan Owen Village, which can be visited when time allows. From here, a pleasant footpath through the woods leads up to Nanguernal Station. The result of Aberystwyth on Cardigan Bay is the departure point for steam trains on the two-foot gauge Vale of Rydal Railway. Passengers join trains alongside platforms of the main railway station for the 12-mile journey to Devil's Bridge, 680 feet above sea level. The line was built by a private company to transport lead ore from the hillside mines of the Rydal Valley down to the harbour at Aberystwyth. Operated first by the Cambria Railways, then the Great Western, and later British Railways. And it was subsequently transferred to the Brecon Mountain Railway owners in 1989. It has survived over the years as a passenger carrying line, mainly for the spectacular views the journey offers. <laughs> As the river rival follows its gentle course in the valley below, the powerful little locomotives, built at the famous Great Western Works at Swindon, make an impressive sight and sound as the trains steadily climb the side of the wooded valley. On arrival, time can be made for a visit to the famous Devil's Bridge and the spectacular Minock Falls in a wooded gorge, one of the true wonders of Wales. The railway scene are only some of the passenger carrying narrow gauge lines around Britain. They operate today to publish timetables, usually between the spring and autumn each year. All these railways are making ongoing improvements for the future. Some lines are being extended over original routes, using mainly volunteer labour. The return of many of these narrow gauge lines has enhanced the spirit of travel and adventure, perhaps lost to us since the 1930s.